One of the things I want to do is avoid frustration. I don't want you being frustrated about why you can't access certain content. So what we're going to do in this nugget is talk about permission levels, which are used throughout the entire SharePoint organization to provide access from an item level within a list or a document within a library all the way up through a site collection. So what I want to do is talk to you about the inheritance process, how the inheritance can be broken and what that means to you. And then I want to log in as a few different users and show you what you'll have as an end user if you had read versus contribute versus edit permissions. So that way, when you're trying to work with content, if you're not getting access to specific content, you'll understand it's because of the permission level that you've been provided. And maybe you can speak to the site owner and talk to them about giving you some additional permissions. So let's get started by taking a look at the permission levels we're most concerned with as an end user. The permission hierarchy starts at the top of the site collection. So if we have multiple site collections, each site collection has its own individual permission levels to work with. Within the site collections, we then create subsites. Within subsites, we have lists and libraries. Contained within there, we can have folders. And contained within there, we can have list items or documents. By default, we have what's called permission inheritance. So starting on the top left-hand side, we have our site collection permissions. These are being inherited by subsite number one, which is also being inherited by subsite number two. And if this list and library was part of subsite number two, it would inherit those permissions. This folder would then inherit these permissions and the list items or the documents would then inherit those permissions. So by default, our site collection determines what permission levels are available at the different levels. Now, let's go to the right side. We're going to start with a site collection, top level site, default permissions. And you're going to see that we have created unique permissions. We've actually broken the inheritance. So we're no longer inheriting permissions from the site collection level. What happens next? Subsite 4 is now inheriting the permissions that we defined at subsite 3, which means this list and library is inheriting from subsite number 4. And within there, we have our folder. And within there, we have list items and documents. Or if we don't have a folder, every list item or every document inherits from the list or library. So as we go through this, the top level site becomes a parent. And this subsite 3 becomes a child. However, subsite 4 is also a child. And now, because this is a child, what's that make subsite 3? It also makes this a parent because of the inheritance process. And that traverses all the way down through the permission hierarchy. So if anywhere along this hierarchy, I decide to break the permission strategy again, like underneath subsite 4 down to the list or library, now these individual documents and folders and list items now will inherit from here instead of from there. So it's a permission hierarchy that traverses down through unless you break the inheritance. So you may be in subsite 4, and then all of a sudden you try to go to a list in library, and you can't access it. Well, it's because you don't have the appropriate permissions because someone has broken the inheritance. Now, we can't do anything about this as an end user in a collaboration environment. Our site owners and site collection administrators control the level of inheritance. So if you're interested in learning more about this inheritance process and breaking the inheritance, be sure to visit our courses on SharePoint 2016 as a site owner and or as a site collection administrator. Now for what we're doing in this course, we are concerned really in this category here, list and library items. So what I want to do is explore the permissions individual users will have when using these permission levels within this lower part of the hierarchy. And to do so, we have been working in Cheryl's account. So we're going to log back in just to refresh your memory as to what we can do when we have the edit permission. Then I'm going to log out and log in as Vicky, who has the contribute permission. Now, why is this important? When you have a team site, anyone who is a member of the team site gets edit permission. But if you don't use the team site template when you create a site, 
then you get contribute. And I want to make sure you understand the difference between contribute and edit. And the last thing I want to show you is you may invite people just to view your content. So what I'm also going to do is log in as Jeff, who is a visitor, and we'll see what he can do with the read permission. I want to compare and contrast the differences between the edit permissions, which Cheryl has, the contribute permissions, which Vicky has, and the read permissions, which Jeff has. So the reason I'm starting in Cheryl's account is because I want to draw your attention to the fact that she can share this site, she can follow the site, and she can edit this page. If she goes to the gears, she can look at who the information is shared with, edit the page, as well as adding a page. She can add an app. That's a biggie. Site contents can be viewed, as well as just the few site settings that we have as an individual with the edit permissions. And we can work with the getting started tiles. If I go to a list and I go to the list tab, you're going to see that she can also go to the list settings. We've already been in there and looked at those. She can work with views and she can work with the office product. Same if I go to a library, I go to the library tab, I can go into the library settings, I can go to a document within the library, and I can open it, share it, follow it, and if I go to the ellipsis, download, view, rename, delete, copy, and let me scroll down here, and you'll see the advanced option has the shared with, compliance details, checkout, follow. So I wanted to draw your attention to what we can do as an editor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log out as Cheryl, and I'm going to log in as Vicky, who has the contribute permissions, and then we're going to take the same tour to see what Vicky can do with contribute permissions. You'll see now that we're logged in as Vicky, I no longer have the share item available to me. If I go to my gear, I no longer have an option for adding an app. So that's a big, big difference is that I can't add any apps to a site when I'm using the contribute permission. If I go to the list and go up to the list item, you're going to see I have no access to the list settings. I can create a view, but I can't modify the current view. And if I go to the SharePoint 2016 upgrade library, we'll go to the library tab. And again, no access to the library settings. Create a view as possible using quick edit, but no modification of the current view. And if I go to a document within the library, click the ellipsis, open, share, follow the document if I want to. Hit the second set of ellipses and notice I can open it, download it, because I'm logged in as a contributor. So I don't want to be able to work with all of this content. And I have all those options available to me as a contributor, including the check-in, the checkout, the follow workflows, all the items I would need as someone who's contributing to this site. So those are the options that I have as Vicky, as a contributor. Let's go ahead and pause with the magic uh, video, and we'll come back in as Jeff, who has read-only permissions. So you can see now I'm logged in as Jeff. He can still follow the site. If he goes to the gears, not much happening here. Shared with, site contents, minimal we can do with site settings and getting started. If I do click on site contents, notice all the list and libraries are available to me. In fact, I can access Cheryl's SP upgrade task from in here, and it brings me to that list. Or I could have done it over on the quick launch bar. Notice no options for editing the top link bar or the quick launch bar. I can go into the list tab on the top left hand side. No options for list settings. No options for working with any of the views. And if I go to an item within the list, all I can do is open that item within the list. Same with the library. Go to our upgrade library. Go to the library tab. Nothing going on with those settings or the views. Go to an item within the library. And you can see I can open it, I can share the document, and I can follow the document. So that's pretty slick. Even as someone who has read-only access to a document, they can follow that. So if I make a change to it as the owner of it, they'll be able to see that change. So those are the three groups at the lower level of our permission hierarchy that we need to be concerned with as an end user. So if you have any issues with accessing content within a site, you need to talk to the site owner. And you need to sweet talk them into giving you permissions to that list or library. And now you know the different types of permissions that you can get. Edit, contribute, or read only. And you'll have to choose the one that's best for you. For additional information on this SharePoint permission hierarchy, I suggest that you visit this site and review that content. This is a site that is managed and maintained by Microsoft. So as this permission hierarchy changes, this site will be updated. So you may want to bookmark this in the event they make some changes to this permission hierarchy. Well, I certainly hope this nugget on permission levels has been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.